Sometimes you got to face your reality and go, okay, this is where I am right now. It's not where I'm going to stay. But if I have a big enough gap, I'm actually going to be able to make more money because I'm not living a life of desperation and I'm living a life of inspiration. So you've got to learn how to have that discipline. Welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneur. Today, we're going to talk about overcoming bad financial decisions. And I know as soon as you heard that, you probably started thinking and racking up a list of all the bad financial decisions maybe you've made in the past, maybe that you know family members have made or friends have made. But don't you want to know how to bounce back from those decisions? So I'm going to give you my top tips on overcoming them and making sure you don't find yourself in the same position over and over again. Because usually what happens when you make bad financial decisions is you get set in a toxic loop of shame. You go, oh my gosh, I'm already you know $20,000 in debt, so I might as well open up another credit card. What's it gonna hurt me? And then you rack up even more debt. Or you're somebody that says, oh, you know, I already made this poor investment So I've lost all my money. I might as well just YOLO live for today, (laughs) which we also don't want to do. We want to find a healthy balance of those things, okay? So I'm going to share with you the top financial mistakes that I see people making, whether it be people in my mastermind group, previous groups that I've coached, even some of my private clients in the past have made these types of mistakes. Heck, I've even made some of the mistakes that I'm going to talk about today, okay? So number one is overspending and living beyond your means. Back in the day when I first started making money, okay, I'm talking about 12, 13 years ago, Chase and I were used to making about $100,000 a year combined, okay? So he was working full-time at his job. I was working full-time as a nurse. Plus, I also picked up some extra like shifts and stuff like that so we could go on vacation. So You know, we lived very comfortably back then, but again, we had to work really hard for it. And, you know, every dollar we spent, we really thought about it because we go, okay, we got to work like 12 more hours for that. So (laughs) you really like think about it. And we were disciplined because we didn't want to have to work more than we had to work. But then once I got into network marketing and it seemed like we were making money in our sleep. We legit were because it was internet marketing. People were buying stuff while we were sleeping and the money just started to come in like way more than we ever even thought possible for ourselves. And maybe that's what's happening to you because if you're watching this right now, you're probably making money on the internet. So you've found a way to make money while you sleep. Well, if your identity doesn't catch up to that of a wealthy person, you will still have the spending habits of somebody that's living paycheck to paycheck, okay? So we had all of this money that we really didn't know what to do with because we didn't have a big vision for our lives. So we go, okay, let's get a bigger car. Let's get a bigger house. Let's go on vacation. Let's give money away to everybody. Let's go to all these charity events and buy everything that you never even use. I mean, that was really what we did. And I I can laugh about it now, but I go, sometimes if I really think about it, I get mad at myself because I'm like, wow, if I would have had the financial education that I have now, I probably wouldn't even be doing this podcast, you guys, because it's like, oh my goodness, I could have made better decisions and I'd be living on an island alone right now. But here we are. I'm still happy to be here with all of you guys because I do love teaching (laughs) about all my mistakes. (laughs) But anyways, you, you can't live beyond your means. And I teach this to my private clients and people in my mastermind. You guys have to have a gap. What is the gap? It's the difference between your lifestyle expenses and your monthly income. You want there to be a very large gap. So that means that if you're making $10,000 a month, your lifestyle expenses should fall below $4,000 a month. And you might go, Kayla, what world are you living in in order for that to happen? Well, it's one of discipline. And if you don't like that $4,000 a month price point, 
then you need to figure out how to make a lot more money than $10,000 a month. And that's just the reality of it. Sometimes you got to face your reality and go, okay, this is where I am right now. It's not where I'm going to stay. But if I have a big enough gap, I'm actually going to be able to make more money because I'm not living a life of desperation and I'm living a life of inspiration. So you've got to learn how to have that discipline. We're going to talk about that later on. Number two is sometimes you get caught in accumulating high debt that is bad consumer debt. It's the one that is a credit card that has a 24.9% APR rate and you find yourself just paying the minimum payment on this and it starts to creep up on you and you spend thousands and thousands of dollars in just the interest to get that consumer debt paid off. So if you do not have the discipline built up to completely pay your credit card off every single month, cut your credit cards up, cut them up. You have got to build up that discipline, okay? I remember there was a time where we had really gotten a pinch and I had like seven credit cards and I just went and froze all of the credit cards so I couldn't even use them because I know like that feeling of having to go and I got to put everything on a credit card right now. So I just went and froze them all because I was like, I don't want to get rid of them. (laughs) I want to keep them for maybe later on when I'm out of this little pinchy situation. But right now, I'm going to put them on freeze, okay? So number three, the reason I see people make bad financial decisions is they have an emergency come up. So a medical emergency, a car emergency, a house emergency, and they don't have an emergency savings set up for times like that. The reason why we have a rainy day plan is because we all know rainy days come as an entrepreneur. You think a launch is going to go well. You invested $100,000 in it and it's crickets. (laughs) And all of a sudden, you have $100,000 in expenses that you need to pay off. And I've had that happen to me before, you guys, where I had a launch go bad. I invested $100,000 in it and it came time to pay the piper. And guess what? I had to pull that $100,000 out of savings. That freaking hurt my heart. But thank God I had a savings for it. Okay, there's a reason why we save for that. And I'm also going to talk about the identity behind being a saver in just a little bit. So stay tuned. Okay. The last thing I'm going to talk about is, well, actually I want two more things. I have my notes here. (laughs) Making impulsive investment decisions. Okay. Especially with social media being so noisy. And if you're following certain people, they're going to tell you multifamily real estate is the best. Or maybe it's just me that says that. And then you're following another person that says, you know, day trading is the best and crypto is the best. And there's all this noise coming at you. You're starting to experience a little FOMO. For those of you guys that don't know what FOMO is, it means fear of missing out. I had to explain that to my kids the other day. (laughs) Okay. You start to get FOMO over these investment opportunities. You see this top guru talking about it and you're like, I want to buy this, even though you don't know anything about it. Okay. So I found myself in that situation about five, five or six years ago, there was a really cool AI opportunity. And I still, to this day, cannot explain what this AI thing does that I invested in. Okay. But I invested multiple six figures into this thing. Again, I still cannot explain to you what it does. And that's clue number one. You shouldn't invest in it. if You don't understand it enough to explain it to somebody. But I had major FOMO. I was like, AI is the wave of the future. If I don't get in on this opportunity, like my kids aren't going to be able to eat in 10 years. Like that was what was happening in my mind. And, you know, the people I was talking to about it were friends that were invested into the company. And so I was like, oh my gosh, like if they get, you know, a multi-million dollar return and I'm sitting back just like doing nothing, I'm going to be so mad. So I took the risk and I made this investment. Well, it's supposed to be sold like about a few years ago and we're still, it's still not even making money. And I see the CEO off on yacht trips and all this stuff. And I'm like, hmm, where'd that money go? And uh, (laughs) okay, like I look back and go, I wouldn't have done that. And again, I remember I did that because of peer pressure, because I was very impulsive. I made it out of fear. Remember, if it's a FOMO decision, we don't live out of that spirit of fear. I rebuke that spirit of fear now. You got to understand what you're investing in. You have to make sure that if you're investing that amount of money, 
Okay. So again, multiple six figures. Am I okay with never seeing that again? And at that moment, I really did ask myself that. And I said, yes, because I know I can make that back, which is true. Okay. But still, I'm st- look at me. I'm still pissed that I haven't seen that money. So obviously it wasn't a good decision for me. So you have to be willing to go. I will never see this money again. And I'm totally okay with that. And if you're not, don't do it. Okay. The last thing people make a really bad financial decision around is not following an alignment plan. And I say alignment plan because, you know, I hate the word budget because it feels like constrained. It's like, I don't like to go to budget rental car because I don't want to drive a budget car. Like it, it, there's just a nasty connotation with it. Okay. I like alignment plan. So do you have an alignment plan for your groceries, for your fun spending, you know, that entertainment, clothing, Do you have an alignment plan for your kids' schooling and their future, for your retirement? All of the things. Where is your money going? Tony Robbins talks about how we're not happiest when we achieve something, when we say, yay, you know, we won the gold medal. We're actually happiest in the process because we're making progress towards getting that Olympic medal. And it's the same when it comes to living your life and achieving wealth. It's about making progress along the way. So if you can gamify having an alignment plan, I promise you it's a lot more fun. That's what I've learned to do. I say, okay, how much money can I save this month? Last week, you're going to laugh at me, but last week, okay, Cooper needed a new net guard. So for those of you guys that are hockey moms watching this, you know what I'm talking about. It's like to protect their neck. It's like this Teflon material, okay, that skates can't get through. And he needed a new one. So we went to the hockey store and there was only one left in his size and it had like white marks all over it. And I could swear it was deodorant. And I was like, this is gross. I said, do you guys have another one? They said, no, this is the last one we have in stock. I said, okay, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out these white marks. I don't even know what they are. So can you give me, you know, 15% off? of this. And the guy looked at me and Cooper goes, oh my gosh, Mo, are you serious? You're asking for a discount? I go, yeah, it's not like in, you know, proper condition to sell it at full price. And so the guy ended up giving me 10% off. We, we negotiated. To me, it was fun. Cooper was over here embarrassed by me, but I hope he learned something that takes it into his adulthood. But it was like about the fairness in that, right? And I always gamify everything in that way. How much money can I save? What's the biggest discount I can get? And maybe it's something I need to work on in my mindset, but it makes living in alignment fun to me. And you got to find what works for you. But what are the strategies now to overcome some of those maybe decisions we've made in the past. Number one, you have to change your identity, okay? Your identity is, it's changeable. You can absolutely decide today that you wanna be somebody that saves money, that you want to be a wealthy person, that you wanna be a generous person, and you wanna stop being an overspender. You can decide that today. But how do you actually go from making the decision that I wanna be a wealthy person to actually becoming a wealthy person? Well, your identity only changes when you change your core beliefs. They say that your identity is formed by your religion, by your politics, by the place that you live, and by the people you hang out with the most and what you do for work. So they say those are the five things that really make up your identity. Okay, so find out what do I believe religious wise? What do I believe politics wise? And how is that affecting my money decisions, okay? If you're somebody that's like a communist, you're gonna think that, you know, everybody, you're gonna be a little entitled. You're gonna think people should pay for your way in life. I'm an absolute capitalist. I think that, you know what? It's it's free game, okay? And that to each their own. I wanna be a very generous person and take care of people, but at the same time, I don't want to enable bad behavior. I wanna see what can I do and I wanna help my kids see what they can create in their lives. So that's that. those are my political beliefs, right? So how does that affect my identity? Well, in my core beliefs, it's if it's meant to be, it's up to me. It's not anybody else's job to make me wealthy. It's my job. So what can I do today? Who can I serve today? You know, how can I help today? Because if you want to win in this economy, it's just about helping more people. Every day, I got to help more people. 
okay? So number one, you got to change your beliefs. What am I thinking about all of these things? And then you make decisions from a new place because you're thinking different, okay? Financial education. Get a financial education. There is no excuse. If you're listening to this podcast right now, I'm so proud of you because it's increasing your financial literacy. You're hanging out with people who are wealthy, so you start to go catch on to things that they say, okay? But you can also go pick up books. You can go to the library for free and read books from some of the richest people in the world and find out how they think about problems, how they set themselves up for success. Go read Ray Dalio. I love his book. Go listen to some of the things that Warren Buffett has said. And if you don't know who Ray Dalio is, he runs a hedge fund that's worth like, I think, $134 billion they manage at this point. It's pretty awesome. So get your financial ed- education. Three, who are you hanging out with? So if I hang out with people that focus on spending all their money, okay? So they spend a lot of their time shopping, a lot of their time talking about shopping. I don't know, like if I go on social media and I see that on my search page, it's outfits, it's home goods, it's all of these things that I don't really need, then I know I'm filling my mind with stuff that's not gonna help me create wealth. Now, if I go to my search page on social media and it's from the financial gurus, it's about real estate, then I'm, I'm on the right track. Right now, if you go to my search page, it's about food. I know, it's crazy, okay? I, this is what I do for fun. I find yummy recipes, but that's good because I'm making food at home, okay? It's part of my alignment plan to not eat out as much because <laughs> again, gamifying everything. So me and my mom, this is what we do. We send each other recipes and we trade off <laughs> making, making yummy stuff, okay? So, but, who you follow on social media is also who you're hanging out with, right? Because it creates your beliefs, creates your identity. But really, who are you hanging out with? Are the moms at school that you're talking to, if they're overspending and talking about the next best thing to buy their kids, that's what you're thinking. All of a sudden, you're going to be keeping up with the Joneses because you're hanging out with the Joneses too much. So you've got to refrain and practice limited association with people who talk like that. You know, I have uh, wealthy friends. I have a group of wealthy friends and they don't sit around talking about any of that stuff, okay? We're talking about investments. We're talking about our children's hearts, how we can pray for them. And we're, we're having a much elevated conversation. And I really don't have a lot in common with people who talk about shopping and spending because I just get annoyed with it. I haven't shopped for my house in two years because I don't care about those things. I invest in good quality items that I don't have to replace often. Every season, I don't go out and buy, you know, throw pillows because I don't care. I would rather put that $20 into my kid's retirement account than buy a new throw pillow. Like I could care less, minimalist, okay? So think about that for you, how culture and your inner circle is affecting your wealth game. And then the last thing I want you to think about is really accepting where you are right now, okay? If you are in denial about your current financial state, you will never become a wealthy person. That's what I just said, okay? You won't. But when you face the music and you go, okay, I am this much in debt. These are my monthly expenses. This is my current income. And you face the, the music. Awareness is the key to transformation. And acceptance is the first step towards radical change. You go, okay, this is where I am. So what's the next best thing I can do? The next best thing you can do is get to the root cause of why you made all those bad financial decisions in the first place. For me, I go, well, I made all those bad financial decisions because I didn't have a vision. I didn't know where I was going, where I was headed, what I wanted to create for my family. I was just taking it day by day and enjoying life. And there's some fun in that, but also, you know, now I'm able to have that discipline of following the alignment plan and not living out of FOMO because I think, gosh, you know, my 10 year plan, if I do these things, how much is it setting me back? And then it goes, whoa, whoa, I don't want to do that because I want to get to that destination as quickly as possible because that's freedom. That's more fun. It's more time on my hands with people I love. And it makes saying 
no to things a lot easier because I have a vision. And then also the second reason I was making bad financial decisions was because I was making it from a poverty spirit. I was making these decisions to, you know, look like I had a lot of money because I never wanted people to think that I was poor because I grew up as a poor kid and I got made fun of for always wearing, you know, goodwill clothes and not having anything. And, you know, my mom losing our house when I was eight years old, like everybody knew about it in the neighborhood. And so I got made fun of for that. And I, you know, was having that shame cycle happening in my life, even when I had money. And so I had to get to that cause and go, Kayla, you're not a broke girl anymore. But if you keep making these same dumb decisions, you're going to be a broke girl. So who do you want to be? So I had to cast a vision for my identity and who I truly was meant to be like God Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you. So if you know that that's God's plan for you is to prosper, okay, then I'm going to always be good. So I don't need to show off to the world. I just need to do me. I just need to give the best that I can every single day. And I still enjoy my luxury things, but I do it from a different place. And I don't buy just because I can. I buy when I absolutely need something now, right? So get to that root cause of what made you make those bad financial decisions. And if you're needing help with that, you know, one of the things you could do is go to kaylacraft.com forward slash MMM. I have a money mindset makeover book that you can download and work through and help you uncover those root beliefs that will really change your entire life. Okay. So start making some good financial habits, but change your mindset first, right? Hang out with people that are making good decisions around their finances as well. So the thing I want you to focus on doing after you listen to this podcast is I want you to set short-term goals and long-term goals, because what happens is when you decide, okay, this is the person I want to be. I want to be a wealthy person. There's a lot of little decisions you've got to make every single day to then become that person. But what I know is when you decide I'm going to be a wealthy person, you've got to create small wins along the way that help you stay motivated to be that person. Okay, so cultivate small wins every single day in order to stay on track with who you want to be. So remember, gamifying things. If you go and say, okay, How much money can I make this week? How much money can I save this week? (laughs) If you go and see how much you spent on DoorDash last month or Instacart or all of these things that are convenience fees that we overpay for and you go, oh, could I save anything in that? And what is that going to do for me? What I do with DoorDash, I took it off. I'm like not doing it anymore, okay? Because it was outrageous what was happening. It's like makes you a lazier person. So I took off DoorDash and then I go, okay, how can I make the yummiest, healthiest foods for my kids? How can I sneak more veggies into the stuff? And you guys, they're teenagers now, but like still I have to sneak veggies into stuff. So I gamify in my head, how can I sneak this in there? <laughs> and then I go, okay, if I'm saving This is embarrassing, but if I'm saving like $7,000 a month on not eating out, where can that $7,000 go and make me money? Well, Chase and I have a, you know, syndication that we do where we give out small business loans to people. So now I put all of that money in there. And I mean, daily I'd go, okay, normally I would DoorDash and I would spend like $100 right now. So now I'll go and put that into the syndication account. I'll just add $100 in a day. And I know these like are bigger numbers and it might seem like a lot, but you guys, if you don't have an investment vehicle like that yet, put it into a high yield savings account. So you go, okay, I would normally spend, you know, $20 right now on DoorDash. I'm going to move that $20 into my high yield savings account for when a good investment opportunity comes across my path, I'm gonna have a good little nest egg over here to now invest. And that's that's how you start to gamify and make it fun. And when you go to check that high yield savings account 30 days from now, go, oh my gosh, okay, I got $500 in here. Okay, next month, can I get even more in there? What else can I maybe give up to go up? 
And then it seems like so fun. I know this sounds like so nerdy, but like it's cool to be a nerd. Okay. (laughs) This is what I do in my spare time. (laughs) So I really implore you to get to gamifying your wealth lifestyle. And you're going to see it's so rewarding when you have your money working really hard for you. So then you can spend all of your time on your zone of genius and then, you know, being able to make wise decisions when investment opportunities come your way. All right. So thank you so much for listening in today. I hope it helps you overcome bad financial decisions.